Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. So excited to be here uh, and talk about the feature prioritization. Uh, my name is Anmol and uh, just a little bit of an intro about myself. Uh, I'm currently a senior product manager at Amazon uh, and I have been in the product management space for, uh, for about nine years now. Um, I have worked on different projects, launched a lot of different products, um, primarily con a lot of consumer facing products. Prior to Amazon, I was working at TD Bank where I was leading the development of uh, some of the uh, primary features in the online banking as well as the mobile banking app space. So uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me and uh, let's jump into the topic for today. Yeah, so our today's topic is feature prioritization. Now, uh, one of the most challenging aspects of product management is essentially prioritization. Uh, so imagine the scenario you have got a list of uh, unprioritized features and uh, tasks displayed out in front of you, right? And your engineers are telling you that feature A would be like really cool and it will take you to the next level. Uh, but some of the stakeholders, they essentially mention that uh, no feature B should be including, it should be included in V1. And your data analytics team, they might be convinced that feature B is not really necessary and uh, the users are crying out for feature C. So how do you, how do you manage all these different kind of uh, situations? So this is what a feature prioritization is essentially. Uh, so in reality, product managers rarely have enough resources to achieve everything on their own to-do uh, on their to-do list essentially. So think of feature prioritization um, uh, like it's like the art or art and science of deciding what's important to do now and uh, what can wait until later and something we balance with cost and benefit. Essentially, think of it as resources required to build something versus potential reward associated with it. Um, now, what are some of the benefits of feature prioritization? So, why the question arises? Why should you start prioritizing now? Right. So, uh, the benefits again are endless, but uh, some of the things which you know where we can get started is uh, by prioritizing. You can essentially improve the productivity. So, your basically reducing your own as well as your team's stress levels and uh, simultaneously increasing the productivity of your team. Uh, the heightened focus is what matters the most and it essentially gives you flexibility for other features as well. Um, it allows you to allocate sufficient time uh, to complete a lot of different tasks and uh, it also gives you some of those necessary adjustments to, um, to leave the wiggle, wiggle room for any errors. Uh, you have that opportunity to, uh, it basically gives you a little bit of a breathing room and ability to think straight. Um, so when you are basically able to clear your head, recharge your brain, you are able to bring your A game, a, sorry, your A game. Um, and it also keeps you motivated so that you can notice uh, results quicker than if you do not prioritize. So some of the, I guess, questions around prioritization comes, okay, uh, which frameworks do we need to use? What is the right particular, what is the right framework for the prioritizations? And there are a lot of frameworks that have been developed. Uh, but the important thing is, it doesn't matter which framework you use. Uh, the right prioritization framework essentially helps you answer some of these questions, like, uh, are we working on the highest business value item? Are we deliv delivering the right value to the customers? Uh, does our work contribute to broader business objectives or business goals? And uh, can we get this product to the market? Or if the product is already in the market, if we are building a new enhancement, is this really helping our customers? So these are a few, I would say, things to think about before going to the frameworks. And today we are going to discuss some of the frameworks, some of the frameworks that we use, uh, primarily the Moscow method, Kano model, and um, the value versus uh, complexity quadrant. Um, just to recap of what I sort of discussed already, some of the things to consider before prioritizing things, uh, before prioritizing some of the features are uh, essentially the level of effort. Think of it as like how difficult a, a particular feature would be to build, the customer value, uh, how satisfied your customers are going to be, and the, from the business value perspective, essentially how much um, it would help our business in terms of the dollar value. 
Uh, now the next part comes is uh, determining the level of effort. So again, the level of effort in various organizations, different techniques are being used, but uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the most common techniques I would say is uh, around the t-shirt sizing those estimates. So this is very, very widely used um, in the industry and essentially when any product or any project is being uh, sort of um, it's in the planning phase. Um, you get these estimates from different teams, maybe the engineering team or maybe a few other stakeholders. You do some analysis on your own and determine how um, uh, how much how difficult this project would be or how much um, uh, effort this project would take to launch. And then you can categorize it as a, like as extra small, small, medium, large, or uh, extra large. So these would have certain values associated with it. So for example, extra small can be something, you know, uh, the cost can be less than $250,000. Small is somewhere between 250 to 500K and so forth, right? And these are, again, like very, very organization specific things. So I wouldn't want to, uh, um, define some of these metrics for you, but uh, some of the standard practices that are being followed, just uh, hoping to discuss that over here. The next one, which is not as widely used, but is still being used um, at a lot of places, is like a pebble, rock, and boulder methodology. So it sort of follows a similar um, uh, a similar analogy. A very simple project or relatively small effort project would be considered as pebble. A medium project is, think of it like as a rock. and um, a very complex project could be considered as a boulder. Next, we go into the Moscow method. So this is one of the most widely used frameworks in product management. Um, it is also known as the Moscow prioritization technique or Moscow analysis. Um, very commonly used in the agile principle, uh, sorry, agile product management techniques to understand what's important and what's not. It is a very useful tool for communicating to stakeholders in terms of uh, what you are working on, why you are working on, and the name essentially is an acronym of four prioritization categories, uh, which is must have, which is MO standards for must have, should have, uh, could have, and won't have. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look in terms of what these categories mean. So first is must have. Must have essentially means or it represents the features that uh, are essentially the must have features for your product, right? So these are the features you, that you absolutely should not launch without. And this can be due to a variety of reasons. There can be legal reasons around it. There can be safety concerns. There can be some business reasons. Uh, if it's something that has been promised to your users and it, it's essentially a huge driver uh, for the value that you are being that you are providing as a part of your launch, uh, then definitely it would be a terrible idea to launch without it. Now to ensure or to work out if something qualifies as a must have, uh, think about the worst and best case scenarios for not included it. If you are able to picture a successful product without the inclusion of this feature, then um, uh, if, sorry, let me rephrase that. If you cannot picture a successful launch without this feature, then it means it's a must have uh, feature. Should have uh, is essentially for the things that would be better to include, but um, you're, you know, you're not destined for disaster if you don't include those features. Um, could have, again, things that would be nice to include uh, if you have the resources, but again, are not very necessary for the success. Uh, now, this there's a very, very thin line between, uh, I'd say, this could have and should have kind of features. And uh, to work out which features belong in which category, think of um, how each requirement or whether a lack of any requirement would affect the customer experience. Uh, the lesser the impact, the lower the priority of that feature or of that requirement goes. So if the uh, think of it as like if the impact is lower, then it essentially would go into the could have features. If it's a little bit more, then it would be, you know, should have feature. Uh, won't have, again, like really important something that not, that is something we intend not to include at uh, this point. Uh, something to just be aware of in terms of the won't have. Uh, when we say 
won't, won't have it. I think we do not mean that this requirement is trash or it would never be included. We essentially mean that this is not being included at this point. And this can be due to a variety of reasons. Um, can be like lack of resources, lack of time. Um, and uh, it also helps manage uh, stakeholder engagement uh, with the various stakeholders that are that you, you have been working with. Okay, moving on to the next model, the next prioritization model. Uh, so this is something known as the Kano model. Um, and you can see a lot of similarities between the Kano model and the um, uh, and the Moscow technique, which we just looked at. So the Kano models basically divides your features into three different segments. First one is like the delighters. Delighters are essentially the features that customers um, would perceive as uh, something going above and beyond their expect uh, sorry expectations. Um, these things essentially differentiate. Uh, you or your product from the competition. The performance features, uh, customers respond really well to high investments in the performance features. Uh, for the basic features, this is something that is uh, actually expected by the customers to solve their problems. And without these, the product is essentially useless to them. So think about, uh, just as an example, think about, a, a, let's say, um, a hotel industry, right? So when you uh, when you go to a hotel, you would essentially expect that okay, you there would be the hotel would be clean, the room would be clean. You would expect a bed, uh, a mattress, uh, a comforter over there in order for it for a good night's sleep, right? So these are essentially the basic, the minimum expectation the customer, um, um, the customer has from your product or from any service, right? So that's something called as a basic feature. Um, the main idea behind the Kano model is that. Uh, you focus on the features that come under these three brackets um, and accordingly you can manage the level of customer satisfaction that your um, that, that your product is going to have now to find out how customers value certain features you can use questionnaires asking about the experience of the product uh, and how it would change with or without the features that you're planning to implement Another thing uh, as a part of this Kano model is as the time goes along, you may find that a lot of the features which are initially delighters uh, move down to um, more towards the basic necessities um, because, and there can be a lot of reasons around it, right? It's may, maybe because the technology catches up or customers uh, because of the continuous uh, excellence in the product delivery, uh, a lot of the features become sort of like a basic need. So, it is very important to reassess all the features of your product uh, periodically to ensure what becomes the basic needs and what are some of the delighters which uh, you can use. The next one is the value versus complexity quadrant. So something, um, a, a very, very powerful tool again. So it's a prioritization instrument that essentially looks or works in way in form of a matrix uh, it's a two by two grid with a potential value uh, or business value in this case is plotted against the complexity or the effort that's required to build a particular project now to um, to make this framework work uh, the team has to quantify the value and complexity of each feature update or any initiative now i've been talking a lot about the value and complexity so let's first define or do a little bit of a recap in terms of what the value is and what this complexity is. So value is, again, the benefit to your customers and your business that you get out of this feature or this specific launch. Um, is this feature going to alleviate any customer pains? Uh, is this feature improving their day-to-day -day workflow? Um, is it helping them achieve the desired outcome? Uh, how is it going to have the positive impact on the bottom line of your business? These are some of the things which you would look at from a value perspective the complexity or from an effort and standpoint think of it as what does it take for you or for your organization to deliver this feature um, it's often not enough that we create a feature that our customers love the feature or this product should also work for the business so can you afford the cost of building this feature in order to satisfy your customers do you have uh, does this have the right amount of operational cost development time or the skill 
or the training or the technology that is required to uh, to build this feature? Do you have those capabilities right now? Uh, and these are some of the things which you have to think about in terms of the complexity or effort time. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, value versus complexity, it sort of divides or uh, you know puts the features into four different quadrants. Uh, and when we align it together, this criteria can make up for several groups, right? That objectively show what set of features to prioritize first, what set of features to build first, which one to do next, and which one to not do at all. So uh, if you look at the upper left quadrant, these are something known as quick wins uh, or low hanging fruits because of their high value and uh, low complexity. These are some of the opportunities that we should execute with our top priority because these are those low hanging fruits which essentially provide the most value with the least amount of effort. Uh, the second one, th oh, the second quadrant, look at the upper right quadrant. So these are the major projects, big bets, or uh, uh, some of the potential features. These initiatives fall into this block that are sort of big project releases. Uh, that we know are valuable, but are essentially too risky to take on because of the cost or resources involved with them. Uh, then come to the lower left, which are like fill-ins or maybe so in this quadrant, uh, the features or the products are actually positioned, which are nice to have features. These are like small improvements, maybe uh, some interface improvements or um, some small, small enhancement that can uh, essentially make your product um, look better uh, and the final the fourth quadrant is or the lower right one is called time sync features these are the initiatives that we that we would never want our team to be working on because it's essentially not providing business value and it takes a lot of time for us to or our organization to create it so the value versus complexity quadrant as you saw it's an excellent framework to use for teams uh, especially working on new products um, it's a very simple framework, so uh, this framework is really helpful if uh, you need to make some objective decisions fast. Uh, if your team lacks resources, then uh, the value versus uh, complexity quadrant is also an easy way to identify what some of those low-hanging fruit opportunities are. Uh, however, there are also a couple of potential pitfalls as a part of this uh, the, the specific framework. One of the drawbacks is of this value versus complexity quadrant is that it can get quite busy if you're working on some of the, uh, if you're working on a really, really major product with a long list of features. So this, in, in that case, this would not be probably the it, it the best, uh, I would say, framework to use, but uh, it can still provide you a good insight in terms of what to prioritize and what not to prioritize. That's a bit of what we wanted to discuss today. Again, thank you for your time and uh, happy to hear if you have any questions.